how 21st century recycled rubber roofing helps us bring back 19th century style. Coming up next on The Greenhouse Effect. Last time on The Greenhouse Effect, we showed you how LP's engineered wood products are helping us go easier on the environment when it comes to materials for our deep energy retrofit. With the addition framed up and winter fast approaching, it was time to get a roof on this old house. But not just any roof would do. We chose EcoStar Recycled Rubber Faux Slate Roof. Since it's made from 80% recycled rubber, it foots the bill as an environmentally friendly product. And it doesn't hurt that it looks great too. We talked with Charlie Taft about EcoStar Roofing. Well, it's kind of interesting how EcoStar got started. Uh, steep slope roofing, you typically had two choices, asphalt shingles or real slate, or for that matter, high-end metal. That gap in between asphalt shingles and real slate, it covers quite a bit of ground. And so the market niche for a product like EcoStar, a synthetic slate looking product, uh, fills that void. Half the weight of real slate, about half the cost installed, and yet with the life expectancy of 75 years, and also tremendous impact resistance and weathering characteristics. The product is made out of recycled rubber and plastic. One of the products we use extensively is ground up baby diaper scrap. Because it's a great weathering product, it takes about 500 years for a diaper to decompose in the landfill. When a baby diaper is made, you have the leg cutouts and the edging from the diaper. Uh, they grind that up and we buy about 40 to 50 million pounds a year of that product, diverting it from the landfill. You know, we're, we're kind of proud of the fact that we're green in that aspect of it as well. EcoStar also offers lots of colors and profiles, which means you can get pretty creative. They even offer a line of recycled rubber faux cedar shake. Back on our project, the roof was shaping up nicely. While some of the stalwart crew made progress on the EcoStar faux slate on the front pitches, the other guys started on the rear dormer roof. Here, our approach was a bit different. Since the slope had been raised to a one pitch, we needed to install a membrane type roof to keep the elements out. Usually this means a black rubber roof, but we opted for Weatherbond weld-free TPO instead. It's a layered reinforced material that's much more durable than standard rubber. We chose a white surface because it'll reflect more sunlight in the summertime to help keep attic temperatures lower and keep our air conditioning bills at a minimum. Keeping the roof surface cooler during hot summer months will also help the solar panels work more efficiently because high heat can cause the output of solar panels to drop. Since the crew didn't need any special tools for the weld-free installation, they were able to make short work of it. The Weatherbond TPO doesn't wrinkle and bind like regular rubber roof, and the Weatherbond surface is much more resistant to puncture damage. This made the installation trouble-free, and I don't worry about workers damaging the surface when they install the solar panels. Careful attention to sealing all the seams properly is key. And once the main roof installation was done, the Third Sun solar crew arrived to install the standoffs for the solar panels. The standoffs are the upright part of the solar panel rack system. Since they had to attach them through the new Weatherbond TPO roof, I had to install flashing, called witches hats for obvious reasons, on each standoff. This had to be done after the Third Sun crew quit for the day and before they came back in the morning. And it had to be done right to make sure there were no leaks. The next day, Third Sun came back to get the panels installed. We couldn't wait to start making our own clean power. Because the incentives on our system came up to 70% of the total costs, it would pay for itself in less than 10 years. Since the system has a life expectancy of nearly 30 years, we'd be looking at 20 years of free power but it's the deep energy retrofit that helps make the solar work here. Since we'll be cutting our energy use by more than half with our major efficiency upgrades, renewables now stand a chance of providing all of the energy we need. That's the one-two punch of a DER and the power behind its ability to positively affect the economy, the environment, and national security all at once. As cool as solar panels are, efficiency comes first. That's the challenge for next time how to retrofit the old drafty walls to get a super tight and insulated shell. For more details, follow us on our website, thegreenhouseeffect.com. And stay tuned, there's a lot more energy retrofit adventure to come on The Greenhouse Effect.